top of the time. Yeah, this is tea time. Make a difference. One cup at a time. So be sure to grab your tea, grab a seat, and tune in to Miss Liz. Tea time. Make a difference. One cup at a time. And there we go. It pauses for a few seconds. I'm going to have to fix that. So welcome, everybody, to Evening Tea Time with Miss Liz. That's right. I am back. And we are on Season 5. And I have Chris D.T. Gordon in the house. And we're going to be talking about his book. And we're going to be talking about the tag. Now, if you want to know more about the tag, you got to stay tuned and join us. Check out Miss Liz's YouTube channel. Give that a quick subscribe and ring that bell so that you can be notified when all these tea times go live. Or you can even join us during the live conversations with your comments, questions, and support. We really, truly appreciate it over here at Ms. Liz's house. So before we get started, I forgot it this morning, this afternoon, but we're going to do it this evening. We're going to do the disclaimer uh, so we don't get in any trouble. We're going to do all of that good stuff. And then I'm going to give you a little bit on Chris, and then Chris is going to come in, and we're going to spill a good TEA with all of you guys tonight. Disclaimer for Miss Liz's Tea Time Live Show. Miss Liz, myself, is going live using StreamYard. Before leaving a comment, please grant StreamYard permission to see your name at StreamYard.com. Please be advised that the content brought forward for any Tea Time show hosted by myself, Miss Liz, is always brought forward in good faith. However, may bring forward dialogues and opinions that are not representative of my platform. The facts and information are perceived to be accurate at the given time of airing. All Tea Time guests and audience participants are responsible for using their good judgment and taking any action that may relate to the discussion. The content brought forward may include discussion for some where they may be emotionally at risk. It's significant to know that the show is engaging in discussion forums only to offer and inspire awareness and connection and is not providing therapeutical advice. If you have any questions about the disclaimer or the panelist discussion, you may freely contact me, Ms. Liz, through my email at bookingmisliz at gmail.com. Moving forward, should you choose to voluntarily participate in tonight's show in any aspect, I myself, Ms. Liz, welcomes you. And should you decide that the show is not made for you at this time, I respect those wishes and we'll see you at a later show at a later date and time. And again, all tea times this year in 2024 are done at 3 and 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Thursdays. If it's not a Thursday, it's a surprise tea time or returning guest. So let me get Chris in the house here and we're going to spill some tea. But I'm going to give you a little bit on Chris. I'm not going to give you the full bio because if you want to check the full bio out, you can check out Miss Liz's Facebook page for that. Chris D.T. Gordon is a faithful family member, veteran online teacher, professional speaker, podcast host, author, mar mar marathon runner, mar martial arts and pop culture enthusiast, a.k.a. geek. He is also a survivor of life-threatening disease who uses his story and message to inspire and motivate others to overcome their challenges with gratitude, positivity, and resilience. Go for great greatness and make the world a better place. Chris is from Minnesota, U.S. His favorite color is navy blue, which we'll talk about tonight. And one word that describes him is unique. And don't forget, his T is thankful, elevate, and appreciate. We'll get that as soon as he gets in here. So let me get him in here. Ketchup wow. belongs on eggs. <laughs> Ketchup belongs on eggs. <laughs> that is my unpopular opinion. That's how I was raised. That's how I live my life. <laughs> so how are you doing, Ms. Liz? I am good. Chris, thank you so much. Uh, you know, sometimes I my tongue twists and all of that, and it's a new season. I haven't even relaxed. Like we were talking about Christmas. I was trying to ask you how you were, and I said uh, Christmas. You know, like we're not even over the holidays yet. We're just moving on already in the new year. So, Chris, let's get into who Chris was as a little boy and who Chris is now. Okay. Well, you know, as a little boy, I was a lot heavier on top, as you can imagine. I can't, I'm not sure if you can't tell, I am a ginger. So not only was I redheaded on top, I was white all over because I burned really easily. So I had sunscreen. Uh, I had a lot of energy. So I spent time playing in the backyard, running around, eventually finding a soccer ball and playing with that. 
intermittently between my dates with my first girlfriend, Nintendo. So you can see where some of my interests lie. But overall, I, 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 I sometimes say I was an average kid, but those who know me best know that is far from the truth. So I don't know how much more you want me to expound, but as <laughs> being a professional speaker, I could go on and on. Well, and that's what I mean. We could do a nice, smooth, sm nice, smooth flow, or we could take our time and do it in little bits, add a little bit of sugar at a time, a little bit of cream. We also have a comment here that says ketchup on eggs, but also on Tabasco sauce, too. All right. <laughs> I, I respect that. <laughs> I just love eggs. I, you know what? I think that's the only thing I put ketchup on is my eggs. I don't put ketchup on anything else. Okay. I, I like ketchup on uh, some potatoes. Unless they have really good seasoning, then you don't want to sully the seasoning with the ketchup. Used to put ketchup on hamburgers, but I found that steak sauce just kicks it up another level. Ooh, yeah. I never thought of putting steak sauce on my burgers. I'm going to have to try that. Ooh, it's good stuff. Yeah, we'll have to do that. So, Chris, I I want to get into your story on the book that you wrote. And where did you get the TAG? Because I want my listeners and audience to understand what TAG stands for. Well, to understand where TAG comes from means I have to basically tell my origin story. We are like superheroes in a couple different ways. First of all, Ms. Liz, we all have a mild-mannered side where we put on our glasses and we have our head kind of slunched down. We go about our day. We do things on a range of horrible to good-ish. And then we take off those glasses. We thrust our chest forward, and we are super at some tasks. And we oh, you know what? I just caught on areas. to it. Chris, I just caught on to it. I'm, you're sitting there with the suit jacket on, and you have, ah, uh, there's a superhero. Yep. I got it. it. I got it. The cover of my book, yes. Oh, you know what? It didn't even click until you, until you, started talking about the superhero and then it it reminded me of superman i was like oh, hero exactly yes and so that's one way we're like superheroes the other way is we all like to wear tights no no that's me the <laughs> third way is we all have an origin story and an origin story is that moment in your life where you are faced with a question or questions and your answers to those questions sets the trajectory of your life from that point on. Well, in March of 2015, I had my most dire origin story. And it all came from a seemingly normal occurrence with my garage wall. See, I was helping one of my two-year-old twins get to the van in our detached garage so my wife could take them to daycare and then she could go to her school on a normal Wednesday morning. Well, I was flying back and forth with the two-year-old. I veered too far to the right. I scratched the back of my right hand on my garage wall. I'm holding the two-year-old in the left hand. I look at my right hand and I quote one of my favorite movies of all time. Tis but a scratch. There's no blood. So I figured, all right, I'll keep going. So I put the two-year-old into the car seat, kissed them all goodbye. And as they went on their way, I went on my way back into the house, washed off my hand, and started my day of online teaching, which I still do to this day. Well, three days later, I wake up and find a lacrosse ball-sized bump on my right elbow. I go to the urgent care clinic in our town here. The doctor says, oh, it might be bursitis, which is an inflammation of the bursa sac in our joints. And he just told me to keep an eye on it. So I kept an eye on it as the bump grew and grew and grew. 
until my right arm was three times the size of my left. Well, wow. I wasn't happy with that. Not the, I mean, I look like the Incredible Hulk in mid-transformation. So other than that humorous observation, I was not feeling at all well. Becky found a babysitter for the kids. Becky being my wife, I'm not sure if I touched a point on that. And she took me to the emergency room. Long story short, this stunned the emergency room staff. They had no idea what was going on with my arm. On top of that, I had also gone septic. So they kept me overnight for observation. The next morning, that attending doctor echoes that sentiment I just brought up that they had no idea what was going on. This was beyond them, her direct quote. And she asked me what I wanted to do, where I wanted to go. Well, the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota was two hours away. Also, Becky's parents, Bill and Dee, lived in Rochester. So that was my answer. They got me strapped to a gurney, drove me from the hospital to a municipal airport, flew me to Rochester, shipped me to the St. Mary's Hospital, which is the flagship facility in the mail care system there in Rochester. And it's there where they diagnosed me with necrotizing fasciitis, also known oh. as flesh-eating bacteria. Oh. Yeah, that's it. That's all. Wow. Yeah. Well, when you sent me your bio and you said a deadly illness, I was I was like, what type of illness? Because I didn't know. Mm -hmm. So how did you overcome that, Chris? Well, that's the next part. Uh, once they knew that I had NF, necrotizing fasciitis, they quickly got me got me into my first of 15 surgeries, most of those taking place in a five-day span where I was in a coma. Wow. Basically, they the first surgery entailed removing the infected skin from my from the back of my left, my right hand where I scratched my hand on the garage wall up through my arm, past my shoulder, to the base of my neck. Wow. Down through my chest, around my rib cage, and up through my back. So they had to take off that infected skin and tissue. They had to debrieb that area, which means clearing it of all bad bacteria. And it's then when they noticed that I had such a bad infection in my arm. It had gone so deep, Liz, that they were planning on amputating my right arm. Wow. So we have a comment here, Chris. I just want to pop it in. No. You know, I, I was thinking that, you know, of all the mishaps and maladies that I could come across, flesh-eating bacteria is right up there with spider bite or gamma bomb radiation so it's it, it, it makes a nice good superhero origin it does like I, I, now i understand why you wear the the, the tag like exactly you know, i was trying to figure out the book cover because i like to analyze a lot of things i like to look within deep right it's like looking mm -hmm. within deep of the cup mm -hmm. and i'm like okay he's wearing it as but until you said superhero it did not click in into my brain why the tag was on the chest. Okay. Yeah. And so, and, and I'll get to it a little bit later, but yeah, I superheroes are very, very special to me. Anyway, well, spoiler alert, I still have my right arm because the occupational therapist in, sur in the surgery saw that it still had hand function. So she told the doctors, they elected to remove a 15 inch by four inch or a 40 me 40 centimeter by 10 ish centimeter flap of skin from my left thigh and place it in my right hand and forearm. Ooh. You can see right there. So Ooh. since this is my thigh on my hand, I call this my thand. Oh, I like it. Copyright pending. 
<laughs> so now I'm not sure if you have this in Canada, Liz, but there's a story, a children's story called When You Give a Mouse a Cookie. Oh, where oh, heard of it. Well, okay. Basically, it's a children's story where this mouse he gets a cookie from someone and then he keeps asking for something else. Basically, one good thing happens, which results in a bad thing. Well, they saved my arm, but now I have a huge gaping hole in my left leg. Ooh. And they can't close it naturally. So they removed one of my thigh muscles, quadricep muscles, uh, specifically the vastus lateralis, and then installed a shoestring type contraption on the inside and knobs on either side of the wound wound on the, on the outside. And within with, over the next couple of weeks, they tightened the knobs so that they can close the wound. Wow. So almost like a doorknob. Basically. Yeah. yeah you may imagine Frankenstein's neck on your leg. Oh, oh yeah. Like the big bolt that was on. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and so that took care of my leg, but then I still had all this exposed skin tissue, etc., on the upper right hand side of my body because of the infected skin they had to remove. So they took a skin graft harvester, or as I lovingly call it, a cheese slicer on steroids and ran it up and down my back and my thighs. Ooh. Now, I had a struggle tanning before. Now I have permanent white stripes all over my body. I, I look very fast. They look like racing stripes. But there's no way I'm getting any tanning any done anymore. So most of that took place within the first five days of my hospitalization, all during that coma. I wake up. I find myself seemingly at the bottom of a water slide where I'm getting pummeled by green liquid. I say seemingly because. In all actuality, I was throwing up the liquid, which was green for some weird reason because it was CT fluid, and that's usually clear. And of all people, I see my brother in the doorway. He lives in Michigan. What is he doing here? So after I get done throwing up and I clean myself off and I apologize to the nurse uh, for yelling at her because I was in all kinds of mess. Actually, I didn't apologize to her. I really need to do that sometimes. Maybe you need to send her an apology. Like yeah. That. So, <laughs> nurse, I'm sorry. Anyway, he calls Becky and Bill. They drive up to visit with me for 20 minutes. And then after our little tete-a-tete, -a, -tete, a, a pleasant one, though. They leave, and I'm left with my new body. Wow. And remember those questions I talked about, Liz, that you ask yourself during those origin stories? Yeah. Well, this is where those questions came into play. But I had no answers. I asked myself, what was I going to do with my new body? If I, you know, when I fully recovered, if I fully recovered, how was I going to be able to relate to Becky, the kids, other family members and friends, my colleagues, my neighbors? What was my mindset going to be like the next time I scratched myself or got injured or even went outside? I had no answers to those questions. And I could feel my mind start to spiral in that negative space. And I called it personal bacteria because it just fed on my mind. And had I not gone out of that spiral, out of that whirlpool of negativity, who knows where I would be now. But again, spoiler, I got out. And it's all due to my wife. One of during one of the first days after my coma, 
Becky came to visit me. And as we're chatting, she started telling me about all the positive things people were doing for us in our various communities. Our neighbors were snow blowing our driveways and shoveling our walkways. I mean, by this time, it was April, but like Canada, in Minnesota, April is just winter round two. Yeah. I guess well, I don't know. A usual this, winter. Yeah, this season, I think we're just going to have spring all, all year because we got no yeah. snow. It doesn't even feel winter over here. No, no. It, it's very, very chilly, but very blah, too. Yeah, yeah it's but, it's not normal behavior, not normal weather, right? Yeah, but that's not the case right now. I cased eight years ago. Eight and a half years, eight, almost nine years ago, there was a lot of snow on the ground. And our yeah. neighbors were clearing it off. The law, local law enforcement was checking on the house because when you live in a small town, the term flesh-eating bacteria spreads as quickly as the actual bacteria. Everyone knew our business. Some colleagues of mine who lived in Rochester, because being an online teacher, I serve students all over the state of Minnesota. So I have colleagues all over the state of Minnesota, including the Rochester area. Some of them stop by to drop off toys and clothes to my kids. They dropped off food and meals for Becky and Bill and Dee. They even played with my kids, something I could not do at that time. As I mentioned before, my brother Jeff flew in from Michigan. As soon as he heard what I had contracted, he came down, he flew over from Michigan to Minneapolis, St. Paul, took a shuttle down to Rochester and stayed a week and a half in Rochester, wow. sometimes sleeping overnight in the hospital just so he could get the latest updates on my condition. And he also bought me an iPad, which will come into play later. <laughs> Even one of Becky's classmates from high school started a GoFundMe account to make uh, to make up for the lost wages incurred by my hospitalization. Because as it turns out, I missed an entire quarter of the school year. Oh, wow. Due to my illness. So when Becky told me all of these wonderful things that people were doing for us, that personal bacteria washed away. And I was left with what I now call the attitude of gratitude. I, I, you know, now that I got it, now that I, I understand the tag, I'm just like, like I got my own little Superman here. <laughs> <laughs> I, we, we do have a comment here that I want to bring up. Uh, I don't know if you have any tattoos. Did you have tattoos? Um, No, no. And I was never one to really be drawn to tattoos. But I jokingly say that scars are tattoos with better stories. Or another one I say is scars are tattoos for tough people. And I always say that with a wink, you know, because <laughs> <What a wink. laughs> I, I don't want to be, I don't want to judge, but I, I don't need any tattoos. I mean, maybe I could get one where my nipple used to be because <laughs> You know, that came off along with one of the surgeries. However, I do tote that if I ever am taken into jail for indecent exposure, I have a 50% discount. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. So there is that. But when I thought about how grateful I was, three new questions popped into my head. But I could answer these. The first question was, what good things did I have in my life? And, and so, Ms. Liz, I'm going to ask you, what are some good things that you have in your life? Uh, my, grand, my grandkids, my children, and a roof over my head. Yeah, and that's what we, we usually think about is our family, our house, the big things. And I love the big things. That's what I thought of as well. But then I thought about, what about those little things? What about those seemingly insignificant parts of our lives that bring us that daily dose of joy? 
So the first thing I thought about was that iPad that my brother bought me because I had downloaded Netflix. And the first show I watched on Netflix was Daredevil. I'm not oh. sure if you're aware of Daredevil on Netflix, Ms. Yeah. Liz. It's now on Disney+. Plus, but Daredevil is a blind superhero. Yep. Who, who uh, you know, his, his uh, alter ego is Matt Murdock. That show is phenomenal. It is a benchmark for superhero television. I ate up that show. I, I binged it between my surgeries. And to this day, it's, it's something I think of fondly, not only for the quality of show it is, but also the enjoyment and the escape it gave me. And then I thought about how the window in my hospital room never shined directly, never sun, shined the sun directly into my eyes. I know that sounds really random, but when you are confined to a single spot and you have virtually no control over your environment, not having to ask someone for one more thing is a blessing. Yeah. And then I thought about the hospital pizza. Oh, my goodness. Really? What's your relationship with hospital food, Ms. Liz? Oh, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Yeah, that's what most people say. The hospital pizza at St. Mary's Hospital in Rochester, Minnesota is mwah, chef's kiss. Maybe it was because I hadn't had pizza for a month when I finally had it. But it was great. Deep dish, personal size. Oh, phenomenal. And maybe they had a chef making pizza at the hospital. Chris. Maybe they did. And I <laughs> applaud that person because that was great pizza. And so I do this to the day, to this day. And I use what I call gratitude goggles. Now, I'm not sure if you've ever seen the, sh the movie Free Guy, Ms. Liz. Um, Sounds familiar, but I'm not yeah. going to say yes because I can't remember. Okay, well, a couple of years ago, it was released. Uh, I think it was released in theaters, but I saw it on streaming. It stars Ryan Reynolds as an NPC, a non-playable character in a video game. One oh, day, yes, 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 yes. Yeah, you, so you get the idea. So yeah, he yes, finds yes. these glasses, and his world explodes with possibilities. He sees things he's never seen before. Side quests over there. Weapons over here. Health bars right in front of them. We have the same opportunity, but with different kinds of glasses. I call them gratitude goggles. Because when we put on these gratitude goggles, we see all the positivity around us. I look, for example, I'm looking in my office. I see this flashlight. Now, this flashlight is something I don't need right now. I have plenty of lights illuminating my room at this time. But if the power were to go out or if I were camping, this would be something I would treasure. Then I think about, we're talking about Christmas earlier, tape. Right? How valuable is tape during the holidays? <laughs> All right. Fights are started in my household because of tape. Me too. Yeah. I had a big fight for the Christmas tape this year. So. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And, you know, I think about this mouse that is beaten up and held together by duct tape. But it reminds me of myself. A little older, held together by foreign objects, but still works well. And then I think about my right armpit. Oh, yes. Because, Miss Liz, skin grafts are non porous, which means they don't sweat, which oh. means I only have to use deodorant on one arm. Well, look at you. I know, right? <laughs> you know how much money you save by using deodorant under one arm? Right? Not a lot. Not really, 
deodorant, <laughs> not that expensive. It's not but, like it's a, a right. It doesn't break the bank, does it? <laughs> yeah, no, but it is really cool because when I go running and say a dark shirt or even a, especially a heather gray shirt, I come back. Only half of my shirt is wet. So you only have to wash half, Chris. I save money on deodorant <laughs> and laundry detergent. <laughs> I am just savings abound, but it's being able to see all the positivity around me. Yeah. Now, these aren't rose colored glasses. I'm not covering up the negativity. I'm not covering up, covering up the problems, but by valuing all the positivity around me, those negative aspects of my life shrink. Yeah. And they become more manageable because I am feeding off the positivity all around me. I, I, I like that you went there, Chris, because, you know, we have to look at the like when you asked me what was important to me, I went to my kids and my grandkids and, and my house. Right away. But we have things that are right in front of us that we don't really appreciate. We're not really grateful for. Right. We Exactly. And, you know, I kind of glanced behind me. I have a four foot tall stormtrooper. I nicknamed six because that's how many dollars I paid for him at a garage sale. Now, I don't play with six every day, hardly at all. But whenever I see this guy, I am reminded of the fun story that came about when I fought, when I saw him at a garage sale. And I think of the times we put hats on him and we dress him up. My my uh, my twins are both 11. They're a little taller than he is. And so we put their clothes on him. And it's just the memories yeah. that I am taking from him at this time that make me happy. Even though I am not even interacting with him at all. So, Chris, we have a we have a question about your book here. I'm just going to throw it up so you can see it. So, is the book by all uh, by by? I can't Biography. say the word, but my my tongue. I'm doing tongue twisters now. I I, I need a sip of tea here, or a self help genre type of, or a little bit of both. And the title is for your book. First of all, C. It is both. It's a it's a memoir slash gratitude journal, and. This is called From Survivor to Striver, How Gratitude Can Transform You into a Superhero. And this is actually a, uh, a, a proof copy uh, because I wanted to use this proof copy for my own use and save the actual uh, final print copies for customers. But it's, you know, it's half memoir where I talk about my story not only in the hospital, but after the hospital, I share my uh, my journey to earning my black belt in Taekwondo, my quest to qualify for the Boston Marathon, my journey in becoming a professional speaker and author. I offer several gratitude tips like the gratitude goggles. And then the second half is a six-month journal Ooh. that includes weekly and daily prompts, as well as because I'm a teacher, special, a special ed teacher, assessments at the beginning, the middle and the end. So you can track your progress through this journey of gratitude over time. Oh, I like it. It's different. Well, it kind of fits that word, doesn't it? Unique. Right? Yeah, because you yes. gave me the word unique to describe yourself as an individual. And, and you have a unique story and you have a unique title on your book. You know, when I looked at the word tag, I was trying to understand what the tag was standing for. But as soon as you said superheroes, I was like, ding, 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 ding. The, the light went off. And I was like, I have my own little Superman here. Like, guys, like Miss Liz has a Superman in, in the house. Like, you know, so... Chris, you had mentioned that superheroes are really special to you. So is it because of what you've gone through that superheroes has been special to you? Or since you were a little boy, like when did superheroes become special to you? They have been with me most of my life. 
I I liked Superman and Spider Man and the big heroes when I was a little kid. When I was going through high school, though, I discovered the X Men, and it was that was during the eight late eighties, early nineties when the X Men were incredibly popular. You know, Cyclops was the quintessential leader, but Wolverine was the most popular character. And Wolverine should be your favorite character because he is Canadian. I actually like Wolverine. I just think he's a hottie. (laughs) Okay. I'm just throwing it out there, guys. Like, (laughs) you know what? Hugh Jackman, handsome man. I'm not going to argue. He is. In the comics, he's five foot three. So oh, he's a little shorty like me. He is. He's well, that's what you know. He's he resembles an actual Wolverine, small and nasty. Ooh. So, as a shorter guy myself, I I resonated a bit with Wolverine, and so I became more involved in that. And also, there's another team of fighters, or as you say, heroes in a half shell that I was drawn to. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I'm not sure if you can see that. Oh, my goodness. I talk to the Ninja Turtles every night when I do my dishes. Okay. I'm like, I'm like there's a little bit of scraps left in this thing. Do you guys want them or what? Are you <laughs> down there? That's <laughs> my nice. My kids think that I'm – and my kids are grown adults now. They're like, Mom, who are you talking to? I'm like, I'm talking to the Ninja Turtles. Leave me alone. <laughs> yeah. And many people don't know this, but the Ninja Turtles are a parody of Daredevil. Because when they were created in uh, 1980, they were published in 1984, first published in 1984. But in 1983, uh, Peter Laird and Kevin Eastman were these two up, you know, up and coming struggling writers where, well, during that time, Daredevil, especially Frank Miller's run of Daredevil was very popular. And so they created these characters. That were ninja, like Daredevil. He was trained as a ninja, and they were teenagers. They were mutants because the X Men were popular, and they were turtles because why not? Right. So, a lot of the turtle lore comes from Daredevil because when you think about it, who is the mentor of the turtles? Oh, uh, so isn't it a weasel? No. It's a rat. What's his name? Oh, now we're going to give our ages away here. (laughs) Ow. Ow. I got something in my finger. Ow. It's a little piece of wood. We call a little piece of wood in your finger. Oh, uh, a sliver. Close. A splinter. A splinter. So, So he was called Splinter. Daredevil's mentor was named Stick. Oh, yes. Stick Splinter. Daredevil fought the hand. The turtles fight the who? Oh. <laughs> I'm trying to figure yeah, it out. But what am I showing Chris, you? you got me thinking like I'm like my, my brain. My... Your foot. Your foot. Yes. They fight the foot clan. <laughs> you even... You even we're look, playing charades here. <laughs> yeah, you, you even look at Shredder's helmet. It looks like Magneto's helmet, and he's oh, covered yeah. in metal. And so there are all these parallels. But so I love the Turtles. I love the X Men. Well, as I was going through college, comic book conventions started becoming more popular, and at comic book conventions, people dress up. Yes. So I started dressing up as my favorite comic book heroes. And move, you know, as we move on through time, I get into, you know, teaching, I get to my professional career, I earn some more money, I can buy more comic books and buy more costumes, and I just find myself really steeped in comic book lore and the comic book culture and it becomes part of me. So fast forward to this whole scenario. Like I said before, flesh eating bacteria, a darn good comic book origin. 
Right? Almost as good as being bitten by a radioactive spider. So I might as well run with this. So as you mentioned, a cape, often I have presented in a cape. I've seen that on your YouTube channel. I have seen the cape. <laughs> yes, because because especially with kids, little kids, capes are fun. I I don't know why more people don't wear capes because at the end of the day, you are living your life. You know who I think is Oscar Wilde said, uh, "Be you, everyone else is taken." Right. So if you want to wear a cape, you wear that cape. And I love the fact that I have a, a position, a, a profession, albeit part-time right now, that I can wear a cape and it makes sense. Now, I think if for my more formal outings, I might go with the suit and the shirt, but it's still there. There's the comic book lore and love for these characters is still present on my chest. So I have a question for you, Chris. Yes. How did you come up with the design of Tag? Well, I want to get first uh, to the name Tag. Okay. Because, yes, not only is it an acronym, the Attitude of Gratitude, but I thought about the game Tag. Oh. You know, you run around, you tag some, you touch someone, they're it, and they go around. Well... When you are practicing the attitude of gratitude, you first start with yourself. You think about, what am I thankful for? What do I have in my life that I appreciate? And then you extend it outward. You think about, hey, this person over here, I appreciate you for blah, blah reason. It could be for being my wife or being my kid or delivering my mail to me. Whatever it is, I appreciate you. And I'm going to share my appreciation with you. Then you go to the G. How can I give someone else a reason to be grateful? Because it's then, is that that's when they're it. And they can feel the appreciation and the gratitude to then go and do something nice for someone else. And so when you play tag... You kind of go in a circular motion because you're it and then someone else is it and then someone else is it. And then finally you come in and be it, it again. And so it's all circular. And plus a circle just makes a nice symbol shape. Right. Just makes it more superhero. Yes. It's like tag the button, tag the button, you know, like push the button. Let, let's transform into this hero. What's the power range of do, 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 do. <laughs> Tag, I'm it. Yep. I, I, I just like, I, I like the openness of it. And I like that it, it makes your mind think, right? Because that's the first thing. Like when you talked about tag, you're it. Now I want to just tag your top and tag your it. Like, you know? Yeah. Hey, sh show me the superhero. Like, you know, tag it. I, I like it. It's simple. It's easy. I like things that are simple and easy that make a difference and that actually encourage other people to open up the minds and understand a little bit more of the stories. Right. Well, thank uh, you. We, we have a couple comments here. I want to just put them in about Hugh Hackman. Fun fact, Hugh Hackman isn't just a film actor. He is also a terse. Tr yes, being of the live theater. Yes. He was in The Boy from Oz before he became the man with the claws. Oh, well, I'm going to have to do some digging. Yeah, he is He is a phenomenal actor and theatrical performer. Have you ever seen The Greatest Showman? Yes, yes. He was oh, awesome. Oh, man. That. Yeah. There is, a, there is a video, a YouTube video, that shows a one of the... Uh, I'm not sure exactly what you call it. Basically, they had investors in town in New York, and they were going through songs for the show for these investors, so they would invest in in the movie. And it was coming down to the final song. And this is this was P.T. Barnum's, you know, final song, major final song, uh, from now on. And a, a day before, or a little while before. 
he had been told he had a skin a, a skin cancer growth in his nose. And so he had to have surgery to remove the growth. Oh. And he had 80 stitches put in. He was told not to sing. You can gesticulate. You can run lines. You cannot sing. So they brought in this excellent singer in his stead. I, I'm sorry, I can't remember his name. And the, the actor went through all the songs that he would do until that song. The actor starts singing, and then you see on the, out of the corner of your frame, Hugh Jackman is shaking his head. And you could tell, uh-oh, he's going to do something. He takes over singing, and he belts this thing out with stitches in his face. Wow. And just bolts it out so dramatically and with such fervor that obviously that, you know, the rest of the story, they make the movie, the movie goes gangbusters and it becomes a cult classic. It does. It is a classic. It is awesome. We need more movies like that out there, you know, that has a story behind it. I always mm -hmm. like watching story uh, movies that have a story, you know, it tells well, you. I believe there's a two-part uh, wizard. I know Wicked. They're bringing to the movies. Oh. Yeah, they're uh, doing part one and part two. Oh, cool. Yeah, that's cool. I think it's going to be the first act is the first movie with her with Alphaba uh, singing uh, "Defy Gravity," and then the second act is the second movie. At least I that's what I think it is. And then we have another comment here from um, my viewer. And there is all, all the similarities with Doctor Who and Doctor Strange. You know, these are characters that we don't speak about enough. We need to start bringing these characters to the flat. Like, we need to start having conversations about these heroes. No, I, I have to say, I, I admittedly am not a Whovian. I really haven't gotten to Doctor Who. I have actually dressed up as Doctor Strange before. Oh. I, have the, I have a wig. And I put some gray in it, and I have the uh, I have the uh, the ca the cloak of levitation, and and so there is some of that. But I think yeah. Doctor Strange is more of a rogue, especially if you watch the latest season of What If on Disney Plus. He definitely has a darker side that his conceit takes him to. So, but yeah, I, I, you know what? I think there are worse things to be compared to with Doctor, you know, Doctor Who and Doctor Strange. Not sure if yeah, I never who. really got into Doctor Who. I, I was actually scared of that one. Okay. Just the sound, because it, I think it was a time that it would play in Canada. Mm -hmm. It was like a six o'clock show. It was like after the evening news and it was getting dark. Because I'm a Northern girl, like I'm down South now, but I, I grew up in Northern country. Okay. And, Ontario and it got dark like five o'clock at night because it's winter there like nine months out of 12 months right yeah and it it's just the time it came on and the music I would be like creeped out I'd be like okay I, I'm going for my bath or I'm going to bed I'm reading a book <laughs> I'm out of here like it was kind of like that was how to get me out of the room man it was put Doctor Who on and I, I was gone <laughs> <laughs> oh David Tennant <laughs> <laughs> no disrespect to you doctor who you know and and the characters of that but it was yeah. just the music and the music okay all right yeah there are a lot of uh Whovians who go to comic book conventions so he is he is well represented and she there's also a, a female doctor who but they, yeah they are they are strong in force yeah I just never got into it. I maybe maybe now that I'm older, I don't know. It's just a mute. Certain music kind of just scares the heck out of me, and I'm gone. Like I'm I'm, oh, I'm yeah. out of here. Like, mm -hmm. and I'm a real like when it comes to horror movies, Chris. I'm I just the music will get me out of the room. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. Like, a, yeah, not. I'm not doing it. <laughs> yeah, my I'm son will be huge, like, "Mom, come I'm on!" I'm huge, like, eh. uh, yeah, I'm not a huge horror film either. I uh, a fan either. I feel I feel like I know I look like a zombie. It doesn't mean I have to live my life like one. Yeah. So, Chris, your, your tea is thankful, uh, elevate, and appreciate. And you've kind of gotten into your tea a little bit tonight with, with, this, with telling us your story and that. So, for you, when I asked you what your tea is, why did you come up with those three words? Well, first of all, 
because I was asked by you. So I figured not doing it would be rude. But secondly, they all are parts of tag. I just switched the the G and the A and turned the G into an E. So oh. thankful kind of ties in with thankful. You know, they're spelled the same. And But the elevate, I view that as a way to extend beyond myself, to elevate my gratitude by sharing by sharing it with others and tell and helping them elevate their gratitude game. And then the appreciate that's, you know, acknowledge those who you appreciate is letting people know how you value them for what they have done to elevate your life. So Chris, with this book, where do you want to see this book go? Because we have talked about this before we went live. Uh, well, a couple of days ago, you said you want to spend, you want to sell like 10,000 copies this year. I, yes, I made, I have two audacious goals this year. One is I'm going to run a sub three hour marathon in May. And my, my main goal there is to qualify for the Boston Marathon, which I missed by two and a half minutes uh, in in last year, May, because I had I had run faster than the clock time on their website. But they had so many people who qualified under their own clock time that they had to add a buffer. And so oh. they added a buffer that eclipsed my time. So... I, I'm going to run it again. I'm going to run the marathon again. And, and and not just to qualify for Boston. I want to take advantage of this flat course that I'm running. And I want to run sub three. And that's going to take a lot of work, a lot of dedication. But I figure if you're going to make a goal, make it a scary goal. Make it something that forces you out of complacency and forces you to level up your game. So that's my first goal. My second goal is I want to sell at least 10,000 copies of my book because I want to help others increase their gratitude, positivity, and resilience. And I could have picked 1,000. I could have picked 3,000. But I, I thought, why not go big? Because... At the very least, worst case scenario, if I don't make it, but I still sell more than I did last year, I still am, I'm still winning. I'm still doing better than I did last year. I'm still elevating my game. But why not go big and and motivate myself to reach out to other groups, to reach out to people and inspire them to elevate their own lives without having to spend two months in the hospital being skinned alive, losing body parts, including nipples and going through what I did, even though the hospital pizza is fantastic. <laughs> well, you're not planning on going back to the hospital to have the pizza, are you? Maybe as a guest, but not as a patient. <laughs> so Chris, where do you see yourself going in the next five years? I would like to be a full-time speaker. I I love teaching. I absolutely adore my students. I am so thankful for my colleagues at my online school. It's amazing that we live sometimes hundreds of miles apart, but I feel closer to my colleagues than, uh, than I used to to colleagues I used to like be right physically next door to in a, in the building. But, and I don't mean to do downgrade myself as a teacher. No one else can share my story. No one else can speak from my perspective and offer what I can as a speaker and an author. And if I can do that full time and I put my energies fully into that endeavor then when my when my race is run my game is over i feel like that i will have given as much as i can to make the world a better place i th i think it's doable 
And I like that you're going big because if you don't go big, how can you try, right? How can you get ahead? And I think it's important for all of us to go big or stay home. Yeah. And like I tell everybody at Christmas time, well, Miss Liz did go big and I stayed home. So you can still do it. Go big at home too, you know, yes. and that's what you're doing with online education is you're going big and you're getting it out there. So I want to thank you as a teacher because it's important to thank our teachers. We, you know, we don't say thank you enough to the teachers. And I really want to thank you for your services for that, Chris. Thank you. What's your final message for all the listeners tonight? Well, I want people to pass on perfection and go for greatness. We see visions of perfection all the time on billboards and magazine ads on TV. But when you think about it, how long did it take for that model to look that good? How long do you think that car is going to look that shiny or or not get the paint chipped off it. At most, perfection is fleeting. And at worst, it is maddeningly futile. People have literally gone crazy in the pursuit of perfection. So I say, pass on perfection and go for greatness. Whatever you do, whatever your heart desires go after it with consistency deliberate action and perseverance and I'm, what i mean by that is consistency consistently go after it every day do something to move forward every day diligent and deliberate action keep working hard at your practices go specific Make sure you do the fundamentals and be perseverant. You're going to have good times, but you're definitely going to have bad times. And it's yeah. during those bad times, you have to remember why you were doing it in the first place. And so you might reach a moment of perfection, but you will always be great. Well, thank you so much, Chris. I want to really thank you for sitting and having tea with me tonight. We do have one final question before we wrap up. I just want to get it out there because I think it's deeply important. Have you thought about adapting your book to be a screenplay for the TV films? There are a lot of medical dramas out there that it could make some good episodes. Well, thank you for that question. And thank you for all the questions, first of all, everyone. I have toyed around with the idea I am right now not really pursuing that. I've learned that there is a, I think it's a Russian proverb. If you chase two rabbits, you're going to lose both. And so while I'm, I'm also tra I'm training for a marathon while, you know, prefer pursuing speaking and writing, those are two different rabbits yeah. and two different pursuits. So right now I'm working on getting speaking engagements. I'm working on helping my book. I see those as a similar vein, but eventually, you know, maybe someone will see my, my story as something adaptable to TV and who's going to play me though. I mean, I have been told I look like Stifler from American pie, but Ooh. I don't think he's bald. So Maybe James McAvoy, he pulls off a good chrome dome. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> but again, I have I have permanent cosplay. I have free special effects. So I cast myself. There you go. Thank you for I, this I, honor, Oscar. I, I think that's deeply important. If we're ever going to make a film about our stories, we should be the main character, right? Nobody exactly. can play better than us. Like, come on. They can't tell the story better than us. I was there. Right. You, you know, yeah. the emotions, you know, the feelings, you know, what you said to the nurse, like you, you know, apology letter to the nurse, maybe. Yeah. Again, <laughs> sorry. So Chris, if anybody would like to get your book, where can they get it? Well, they can go to Amazon. It's, uh, I'll, I'll give you the uh, website, even it's tiny URL. So T I N Y U R L.com forward slash 
CDT Gordon Striver. Or you can just go to YouTube or right, go to go to Amazon and type in from Survivor to Striver. Or if someone, if you want to connect them to me, Ms. Liz, and I'm not sure if it'll work with them being in Canada, but I can, we can work something out. I can sign them an autograph, send them an autograph copy myself. Absolutely. We, we, we can always find a way to open up a door. That's what Miss Liz does. Miss Liz knocks on doors and some of them say, Miss Liz, go away. And I'm, I'm just like, I'll be back tomorrow. I'll see you again. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I mean, probably the easiest way would be through Amazon but or, or Barnes and Noble. But if they want an autographed copy, let's make a connection. Awesome. Well, again, Chris, thank you so much for sitting with me and having tea. Thank you to the listeners and the questions this morning, uh, tonight coming in from Tw Twitch. We had a few comments from my good friend Bruce as well. Bruce, yes, I did see you. Hi. Uh, I'm not sure what the second one is. It's a blank one. And tape, LOL, so true. Yeah, uh, I think a lot of people fight over the tape at Christmas time. So, <laughs> again, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. We are doing season five, so we will be back. Thursday at 3 p.m., 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with two new tea times. If you'd like to know more about the tea times, check out the press release that's on Miss Liz's Facebook page and my platforms. And also check out the website because they're all listed there as well. So join us and have some tea and let's have some fun. And let's put some ketchup on some eggs. Yes. <laughs> ketchup on eggs 2024. And I'll see everybody next Thursday, same time, same place with a different TEA for all of you guys.